Hey guys, Josh from Time Performance. Uh, today we're gonna talk about suspension. Um, so there's a million different types of suspension that you can get for your bike. Uh, there's tons of freaking options out there. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about essentially three um, ones that uh, um, that I kind of went through. So the stock setup comes factory and then um, I had a set of legends on the front and rear um, for a while. And then I got rid of those and I ended up going with another brand. So I'm going to talk to you about the pros and cons of all of them, um, and then you can kind of make your decision from there. Um, but I'm going to tell you about my real-world experience um, and things to, to think about. So whether you're going to go for one of those three, I doubt you go for the first, but if you're looking to upgrade your suspension, um, or if you're looking to go for another brand uh, that I haven't tried yet, um, really up to you. So um, there's a little bit of info about uh, what I got going on on my bike. So I'll say that the out of all the performance stuff that I put on my bike, you know, some people were like, man, I'm going to do cams, I'm going to do exhaust, I'm going to do, you know, bigger jugs, I'm going to do, you know, get tune, you know, top end, all this that kind of stuff. That's great. That's great. It'll make you go fast. Um, but what I will say is, the, hands down, the best performance part that I've done on the bike has been brakes and suspension. Um, you upgrade your brakes and suspension. Um, yeah, people may be, beat you in a straight line, um, but if they can't turn, uh, you're always going to be in front of them. So, um, part of the fun and, you know, everybody wants to go through these like curvy, you know, roads and the hills and all that kind of jazz. Um, well you can do that on stock suspension. It's just not nearly as fun. Um, so I'll talk to you about a couple of different things and the reason why I went the route that I did. Okay. So using this as an example, I did have stock, uh, suspension on the rear here when I bought the bike. Um, and what I will say is, you know, just if you're, if you're looking at this for, you know, questions and all kind of stuff, everybody knows what the stock, uh, uh, suspension looks like so the, the coils here are dramatically smaller everything is smaller um, another issue here is any good brand of suspension if you look up here there's going to be a uh, type of bearing okay uh, up here um, and what that does is it, it makes the bike not so locked into place okay if that kind of makes sense with the stock um, suspension there is a rubber uh, like washer in here okay which essentially kind of keeps the whole subframe and your swing arm kind of rigid, okay? It doesn't really give it room to kind of move around. It's just, it's, it's all kind of like hard attached. So there's a lot going on right here that it's depending on for suspension. But, you know, if it's locked into place and it can't really free kind of float in there, um, you're really not doing that well, especially when you have a really, we'll call a $5 suspension kit on a uh you know on your on your new bike that you paid a lot of money for so and uh on the stock side this side's going to be a little bit smaller uh around and everything on the other side it's going to look exactly the same um except for the spring is going to be a little bit bigger and on there will be a mode of adjustment uh, on the other side which doesn't really work that well so one of the first things i did when i got this was i upgraded from the stock suspension uh, to the 13 inch uh, legend Revo A's uh, in the rear and I went with the uh, drop ins for the 19 inch wheel with legends uh, in, the, in the front as well so I kept stock height did the drop ins in the front did 13s in the back so I lifted the back just a little bit um, which was fine it was good it rode just fine um, and I would say that uh, it was a huge 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 um, improvement from stock. Now at that time, I also did upgraded rotors, uh, did Galfa rotors and upgraded pads and stuff like that. I kept the same calipers. Um, and that right there was a huge, huge difference. Um, very, very, very good. It rode really, really well. Um, I was still scraping, you know, I, I only lifted the, the back in an inch, the front stayed stock height. So I was still scraping a lot. I mean, it's a bagger, right? Um, but it, it, it felt a lot more solid. Um, it was really good. Um, so now how did I get to where I'm at now? So about, I rode for about 8,000 miles and my front cartridges on my legends, uh, blew out. Um, you know, we were, I was messing around with it. I got the front tire replaced and my mechanic was like, Hey man, you're sagging a little bit in the front. And, uh, I was like, really? He's like, yeah. And I started like paying attention to it and yeah, it was, it was dipping pretty bad. Um, it was actually the ride height itself was actually going down. So not only was I losing the compression um, in the front suspension, but it was actually sagging the whole front end of the bike, which made it rake even higher, um, which started giving me problems. So I immediately called Legends. I was like, hey, man, you know, what can I do? Um, 
you know, and it, if you look on their site, uh, it may be changed now because this was, uh, I don't know, probably about a year ago. Um, but if you looked at their site, they said that, um, hey, the, you know, you send in your part, but we'll, we'll catalog it. We'll get to it when we get to it. If it's faulty on our end, we'll replace it. We'll send it back to you. So in my mind, uh, you know, I'm writing almost every day, right? So, you know, if I'm doing, if I take my bike apart, take out the front suspension, then I got to pay, send it to you. And then you're going to get to it when you get to it. And you don't know when you're going to get it back because on their side, it says that big shops have priority. Okay. Um, well, that's an issue for me. Cause I, if, you know, I spent a lot of money on your product and now I don't know when I'm going to get it back. So that, that put a bad taste in my mouth. Um, so I've, ha I've heard a lot of stories of guys having similar issues, um, specifically with the fronts, um, the backs, uh, not so much. I mean, I think the, the rears were fine. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of adjustment. It was a one dial. I think it was one dot to nine. Um, so there was some, some ways of, uh, you know, adjustment there. Um, it did lift the bike up a little bit. It did just fine. Uh, so the rears, not too bad. Um, but based off of the customer service and what happened with the fronts, I just went ahead and replaced everything. Um, so this is what we have now. So I'm using RWD, uh, RS ones notice that uh, you have the piggyback here the stock setup had a uh, rubber um, washers there connecting the uh, the shock it was pretty small width wise wasn't really beefy um, and then over here we had the Revo A so the Revo A 13s all right um, so it's about an inch shorter from what I've got now right um, not too big, big bump stop in the middle there. Uh, the only method of, um, so you still have your little like, you know, washer kind of deals in here, kind of keep it flu. Um, method of adjustment here, so you got one through seven, essentially, ticks. Um, as opposed to, you got a little bit more here. Uh, so you got high speed and low speed. The high speed is the uh, the red, the low speed compression is the uh, uh, black. So I noticed the difference. Um, when I'm really getting onto it. So I've taken this bike down to Sebring Raceway. Um, I've taken it on some pretty hard roads, I guess you can say. I'm not gonna say I'm a, a motorcycle rider uh, or racer by any means, but I've gotten into this bike pretty hard and I noticed that I can adjust this and there is a benefit to it. Um, and then this is more like your normal touring, nothing too crazy getting on it here and there, but not really like carbon canyons per se, okay? Now, these are 14s, okay? So they are starting to get up there in uh, in uh, length, okay? So one of the issues that you're gonna experience with this is it starts really kind of tweaking this swing arm, right? So this is a track dynamic swing arm. Um, but you're gonna see it's kind of kind of angled down a little bit, all right? Because this shock is pushing the bike so far up, okay? So you can see this is a touring bike and I essentially have a, a little bit of a gap there. So, uh, guys that are running full length pipes, okay, what happens is these things come out and they're having issues mounting because this bolt right here is going to be rubbing right into the side of the exhaust. Um, so there are guys, there's a, there's a couple of different ways to fix that. Um, I do not have that issue, so I have not looked into how to correct that. But, um, I will say that these shocks right here are an absolute game changer. Um, I've never had an issue with these. I've got about, uh, 10 or 11,000 miles on them now. Um, these things I'm constantly able to, I kind of got it done by memory now, like the based on like where I'm going on how I'm going to adjust these. Um, but realistically, I don't even need to do that. I could kind of just get going and roll. And, um, it's a very, very good product. Um, their customer service is great. So going back here to the front, um, I originally started with a stock suspension, like I stated earlier, and I, I went again upgraded to the uh, full legend drop ins, the adjustable drop ins for the 19 inch wheel. Okay, because that's still stock size wheel. Uh, again, had really good benefits there for about um, about 8,000 miles, like I said, until they just finally blew. And I had basically an issue with customer service, and I was just, I wasn't really happy with it. You know, I spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on bikes. Yeah, I kind of want good service. So this is what I went with from here. Um, I actually lifted the front end of the bike two inches. So now I'm plus two in the back. Actually, it's more like plus two and a quarter. Uh, and then plus two in the front now. So these are 
two inch plus tubes. So they're not extensions, they're actually extended tubes. There's no like, you know, two or three inch cap up here that extends the fork. Um, these are actual like, like longer tubes, um, which gives you better travel. You know, you're not necessarily putting a bump stop on there. Uh, these are, the, the tins themselves are Pro One uh, Performance. Uh, and the drop-ins are actually GP suspension, okay? So GP suspension, really, really good products. Um, you know, they're completely adjustable up here. Um, just need a, need a socket on both sides. You can adjust them. I mean, you can pretty much do it on the fly. I mean, it's really, really good. And that's what I like about the whole suspension here. So I'm adjustable on the front end and the back end to however I want to ride. So if I want to go for a nice, cool cruise, and then I want to go to a racetrack, like, I'm good to go, all right? Um, so big, big, big plus there. Um, I would say, uh, the drop-ins here. So the front I, I did with the rears, again, I got about 10,000, 11,000 miles on them. And, uh, this thing still rides like a race car when I need it to. So I, I tweak them just a little bit, uh, stiffen it up and, uh, and I can, I could bang some corners pretty good. The only downside is with now is we lean so hard that, uh, the bike actually like, like this is straight up. So the bike leans pretty hard now. Um, and there's ways to change that up by doing, uh, you know, aftermarket kickstands and, and whatnot, or doing the blocks underneath the kickstand. Um, I don't know. I feel like there's better places I can spend $150 or so on my bike uh, than a freaking block. So for now, we gangster leaning. Um, but yeah, so there's the bike. Uh, that's the, uh, my review on the suspension. Um, again, you know, the, the legends rears, I didn't really have a problem with them. I knew I was going to go 14th anyways. Um, and with the stuff that happened with the front, I wasn't really a big fan of, and you know, the downtime was just forever. So I ended up just eating that and then, and then lifting the front end, lifting the rear end. And, uh, and now she scoots even better. So uh, my future recommendation is if, if you're going to redo your suspension, do it right. Think about it. Um, uh, I, I didn't review Owens. The guys that have Owens, uh, they have nothing but great things to say about them. Uh, I don't know too much about the customer service, but I don't know how many people actually need to call their customer service. Um, they do offer inverted front ends. Um, that is a pretty penny if you're looking to go into that. Uh, this will probably happen on this bike in the future. Um, uh, but for now, this is where it's at. I think uh, I'm, I've am i got a bike where it's put me at the, the peak of my riding experience. Um, and I don't think that it's the bike's fault right now um, in my progression. So I think once I start kept catching up to the capability of the bike, we might upgrade those. But, you know, Owens does do drop-ins as well. And they're relatively about the you know, same cost um, um, from as what I got here with GP. I was just really, really big fan of GP. I mean, I, I submitted an order in the middle of COVID and they sent out my product in two weeks. So same with the uh, RWD. You know, I, I think I got these off of, uh, I think it was uh, maybe Speed Kings. Um, it took a little bit to get those in, but customer service for, for both these companies is top shelf. And, and when you're starting to spend a lot of money and you got questions, you kind of want to fix your stuff uh, and not wait for it. So. These are the reviews. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what your pros and cons were. If you had any with the companies that list, listed, um, success stories or, or just questions about install, stuff like that. I guess I can go, kind of go through the install later. Um, it's really easy. Uh, there's a million YouTube videos about it. There's a, a really easy, uh, you know, follow chart on the, uh, uh, the RWD puts in their boxes too. So, uh, the front end, a little bit more. I didn't actually do those. You know, I'm active duty, military, so, um, you know, I, I didn't have a whole lot of time. But, uh, yep. Yeah. So, I got, hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for checking it out.